Fast and the Furious 9. Uh, wow, what an experience. Uh, so the way this review is going to work, the first part, spoiler free, and then I'm going to give a spoiler warning halfway through, and I'll do something like, spoiler, 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 and then I'll give some spoilers. So for those of you that want to see it and haven't seen it yet, don't worry, you can still watch this video. So I'm chewing some uh, watermelon bubblegum. I had some popcorn left over, but I don't really feel like eating some popcorn right now. I got some uh, sweet and buttery, like salty popcorn mixed together. I actually asked the guy for that, so I had a little bit of both. Um, there was a decent amount of people going to the movie theater, so nice to see that, you know, more people starting to go out again, go watch movies, really like that. I was waiting for this Fast and Furious movie for a while. I saw Hobbs and Shaw, which was like the rock uh, Dwayne Johnson spinoff with Jason Statham that came out last year. It was pretty good, but it wasn't like a mainline Fast and Furious movie. So I was really excited to see the gang all back together in a new movie. So let's see, what do I got to say about this? Uh, should you go see it? Yes, you should. It's it's a great movie. I would say it's the summer blockbuster of 2021. I don't think any other movie coming out this summer is going to do bigger numbers than Fast and Furious 9. Maybe uh, the next uh, 007 James Bond movie that's coming out in a few months will do equally as good, I think. But this one is awesome. Like, um... You don't have to watch any of the other movies in the Fast and Furious series to go see this one. But if you have, it'll definitely make you appreciate this movie a little bit more. So I do recommend at least watching or have having uh, watched a few of them before you go see this one. Uh, also, this series or franchise of Fast and Furious is known for getting just crazier and more zany and insane every single movie. Like, not to give any spoilers, but there were things they were doing in previous Fast and the Furious movies which were completely, like, illogical. They would not happen in real life. Uh, they went against everything scientific in the known world, and, you know, it made for an entertaining movie, but it was not realistic. And this one just completely follows that trend like they departed going for realism a long time ago and that's what makes these movies fun you know kind of like in the old days you would go watch action movies with like you know Sylvester Stallone uh other actors like of his caliber in the action genre you know Arnold or um Jean-Claude Van Damme like they would be in movies where they would just be, you know, fighting, like, 50 guys in a room with one hand, like, stuff like that, like, just things that probably not possible in real life, skydiving, landing in a small pool of water and surviving, things like this, so, but Fast and Furious is kind of like a modern movie series equivalent of old-style action movies, but to, like, a maximum crazy level of entertainment. <laughs> So, um, I really enjoyed this movie, uh, the music definitely played a huge part in, like, amplifying some of these amazing scenes. If you are into, I, I would have to say if you're into, like, rap music, soundtrack features a lot of popular rap artists, uh, trap artists, and just really nice beats throughout many of the scenes in the movie, so... When something might be a little bit boring, you got at least some really entertaining music going on in the background, especially during the action scenes of the movie, like, really chooses, like, the best songs that just, like, get you hyped and excited for the moment or whatever's going on, so that's something that I, it's kind of like a music video in a way, like, real visuals and music go great together, so that's something I gotta, you know, give props for. Uh, the cast is back, so any of your favorite, and I have to say, of course, without the amazing Paul Walker, 
rest in peace, you know, uh, the entire cast besides him basically returns, um, no Dwayne The Rock Johnson, apparently he had issues with Vin Diesel and Tyrese uh, Gibson in the past, uh, they play the character, uh, Dom, Dominic uh, Toretto, Dom Toretto, and, um, you know, Tyrese in the movie plays Roman and neither of their on-screen characters and off-screen characters <laughs> got along with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, so uh, apparently everything is good between them now, but while this movie was being made, there was some drama and they did not get along, so he might not be in any other movies in the future, so if you like The Rock, you'll definitely miss him in this movie. Like, I'm not even a huge Rock fan, but... I did notice that some scenes in this movie could have definitely used him, but we do get John Cena in this movie, and he has an awesome backstory, and he actually kind of fits in with the movie and everything, which surprised me a lot. I'm not going to go into too much for that, away for spoilers, but I really liked everything they did with the story for this movie. Uh, you know, it goes crazy sci-fi at the end, like every Fast and Furious movie uh, has done in the past, you know, few sequels they've released. Um, I, I have to say that there are maybe like two parts in the movie where there's a lot of dialogue and not a lot of action. So somewhere in like the middle part, they're planning and it does get a tiny bit boring, but for the most part... Tons of action scenes just starts with action, continues with action. You got some, you know, dialogue, exposition, moving the plot forward, and then more action, more action, crazy action, and then it ends with like a huge bang of intensity and emotional moments and nice ending then. So, good movie. Um, if you're a car fan, if you're a fan of racing, uh, cars, uh, things like this, you have to see Fast and Furious, you have to see this one, uh, uh, you're definitely gonna be very happy, and if you're a fan of action movies, you're gonna be happy, um, I don't know if I would recommend people that aren't fans of action films or cars to go see this movie, uh, definitely, you know, there are some romantic scenes, but I would not call it a romantic movie. Uh, there are some comedy scenes, but I would not call this a comedic movie. It's definitely more of an action film based around cars and heists and teamwork. So definitely avoid this movie if you're not into that. But if you are, this is definitely something you should go see. I think they did a really good job uh, incorporating... Uh, all these character backstories into a plot, like a storyline for this movie. Uh, I felt like it flowed really well from start to finish. Uh, I really like what they did, and I cannot wait for the next one. I know some people criticize the movie, especially this one, for being extremely unrealistic. There are scenes where I just laughed at how crazy they were in the theater, and other people laughed with me. But you know what? It's good to laugh, like, even in the movie, the characters begin to realize, like, hey, how in the world are we even still alive? Like, Roman, Tyrese Gibson's character in this movie, he legit says that, like, what is going on? That we survive and we can do these crazy things. So even the movie is self-aware, so that kind of makes it, you know, a little more okay, because at least it knows what it's doing, like... No one, I don't think anyone's going to watch a Fast and Furious movie and expect, you know, something super realistic. Uh, I would put Fast and the Furious in the same category that I put movies like The Avengers in. Like, that's a sci-fi superhero action movie, and that's exactly the category you should put Fast and Furious in action sci-fi movie. The characters in them are basically superheroes at this point, so just go in expecting crazy, fun action, and that's what you're going to get. Um, now, we, now we're going to get to spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. So first off, I was pretty surprised 
just how long this movie was. Um, I was expecting, you know, like two hours, but it felt almost like three hours long. Uh, so definitely on the longer side. So kind of a perfect summer movie, summer blockbuster movie. You know, you go watch this in the afternoon with your friends and then go out to eat dinner afterwards or something. Um, really, really good for that, I think. So just, just be aware, it's a long one. So the plot of this movie has a lot of flashbacks uh, regarding Dominic Toretto's past. So Dom's past, uh, Vin Diesel's character. Uh, there's flashbacks to him as like a young teen with his brother and his dad. His dad used to be a race car driver and he died in a fatal car crash. Uh, Vin Diesel's character, Dom uh, Toretto, blames his younger brother for messing up something in his dad's car, causing him to crash because they would be like, you know, the pit stop there on the racetrack. They would stop and like help their dad fix the car. So they were really involved. Uh, something happens, uh, Dom gets angry when his dad dies and, you know, beats up this, uh, rival opponent of his dad's, uh, that, you know, they would both race and he ends up going to prison and his brother is, you know, on the outside, uh, living the life, racing in the 90s, I believe is the time period that this is set. I have to say, I think one of the future Fast and Furious spinoffs or sequels is going to be some kind of prequel. I think we might see some 90s Fast and Furious movies uh, in the future, like something set in like 1996, possibly. You know, we're going to see like Skyline, Nissan cars, and like Supras and things like this. Um, so if you're a fan of like older 90s racing cars in that scene, I think this is kind of a tease that Fast and Furious is doing to a prequel series, possibly with Dom as a teenager, maybe showing his brother and other characters might make appearances, so uh, honestly, I would be up for that, this movie, though I have to say they did a lot of flashbacks that at points got a little bit annoying, even though the backstory was important, so fast forward to the future, Dom Letty, they're, you know, living their life in the countryside, uh, Dom's fixing cars with his kid, and all of a sudden, um, Tej shows up, he need, you know, uh, Tej, by the way, is played by Ludacris, who kills it, I, I feel like Ludacris and Tyrese really carry these movies at points, like, they are super important, so, they show up, they tell Dom that they need his help, uh, Mr. Nobody, who's like the head of a secret agency that has used their help in the past, needs them. A plane that he was on crashed, and a Cypher, a uh, female villain, played by Charlize Theron from the previous Fast and Furious movies, is back, and she's angry, and she's trying to get revenge, so they have to go recover her in a jungle somewhere. So Dom's like, he wants to stay with his kid, he, he wants to leave this life that they, you know, uh, kind of left in the previous movies, but Letty decides to go help Tej and the rest of the crew, and Dom um, goes as well. So, they head into the jungle, they find the wreckage of this plane, they retrieve some kind of like computer AI program called Ares, Apparently this thing can hack any military weapon on the planet from outer space and they have to like stop this from ever getting to the hands of the villains. Uh, the military of this country shows up all of a sudden as they're getting this uh, uh, super sophisticated AI super weapon from the fallen debris of this airplane and they start chasing them through the jungle. There's some amazing moments with Tej just taking out, like, nine guys with one machine gun. It's awesome. Um, then as they're escaping this military group, um, there's a scene where they go into, like, this field full of mines, and, like, all the military guys just stop because they're not crazy. And then all the rest of them are like, okay, hey, Tej, played by Ludacris, they're like, hey, uh, how fast do we have to go to not get blown up by these mines? And he's like, you have to go at least, like, over 
five miles per hour or something, and then, like, Tyrese's uh, character, Roman, is like, my car can't even go over 70, what's gonna happen? So all these mines are, like, blowing up around them, and they, they survive it, and, uh, out of, out of nowhere near the end, another mysterious car shows up, and chases Letty, who's the one that's carrying this sophisticated AI, uh, he knocks her off, you know, her vehicle, and he retrieves this sophisticated AI, Vin Diesel chases after him, his brother is the one that's in this car, and there's like a little reveal there that's shocking, because Vin Diesel hasn't seen his brother, uh, you know, Dom hasn't seen his brother in a long time, in a long time, I uh, forgot to mention, uh, his brother's name is Jacob, so he's like, Jacob, um, they're, you know, racing each other, kind of like fighting, there's air helicopters behind them shooting missiles, and it's crazy, and then all of a sudden, there's a cliff, um, John Cena's character, Jacob, just flies off the cliff, a jet plane, like a fighter jet, appears out of nowhere, attaches itself to the car flying off the cliff and flies off with it so that's like one of the most unrealistic things ever uh, in this movie but it looked awesome and I loved it so then Dom and Letty are stuck with this, these military guys they have to get out of there they jump off the cliff uh, with like their tires spiked around this like fence fencing and I don't know, there's just crazy stunts going on in this movie. They fly off this cliff, this cliff, uh, into the distance with their tire wrapped around this, like, barbed wire, which kind of, like, saves them, and they manage to get to the other side of this huge cliff. It, it, it looks like it's, like, 50 feet away, and they fly their car off it, and it's just hooked on by these, like, little cables on this rickety bridge. It, it looks amazing, though. So they land, they're safe. Um, they learn a little bit more about what was stolen from them. Dom tells everyone his brother Jacob is involved, and the story goes from there. Uh, so, we later find out that Jacob, uh, Dom's brother, is working with this guy, and they're also working a little bit with a Cypher. Now, Cypher, she is kind of a character in the background in this movie. You know, she's a big bad uh, villain character, but she's only in a few scenes. The trailer makes it seem like she'll be more more important in this movie than she actually is. So I gotta say that this movie really is about John Cena, you know, his character Jacob, versus uh, Vin Diesel's character Dominic Toretto. So this movie has just crazy plot lines that go in different directions. Um, just know if you're a fan of Tokyo Drift, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, you gotta see this movie. Uh, Han from Tokyo Drift is alive, and he is back in this movie. He has a crazy backstory about him protecting this girl, and additionally, the main character from Tokyo Drift shows up in this movie as well as uh, Bow Wow, uh, <laughs> Bow Wow, yes, Lil Bow Wow, is in this movie again, so this is like his first Fast and Furious appearance since Tokyo Drift, I think, so that was amazing. Uh, they are working on some prototype cars with jets, uh, jet engines attached to them, so <laughs> that was just like thrown into the movie, kind of random, but it was hilarious. They play a key role at a later part in the movie, um, then basically the rest of the movie is Dom trying to find his brother Jacob. Jacob is trying to, you know, get some things to, his master plan is basically to, you know, put Ares, upload it into orbit, and use, like, satellites to control government agencies around the world. And he has a right-hand man who seems kind of sketch, and in the end of the movie, his right-hand man betrays him, basically, and he frees the cypher, uh, you know, villain lady played by Charlize Theron, so there's all that going on. Now, one of the craziest scenes in this movie takes place near the end of the film, and I kid you not, they go into outer space, no, not into 
in the sky. They go to space. Yes, Tyrese with his character Roman and Ludacris as Tej. Tej and Roman, they go to space. They basically go meet up with Bow Wow, the guy from Tokyo Drift, um, and this other guy, I forget his name. But basically, they get these jet engine cars. They go <laughs> into, the, into the sky on like a plane. And then once they're already at a very high altitude, they launch themselves off the plane and then turn on these jet engine propulsions and just like boost. It's almost like a rocket getting ready for liftoff and they go into orbit. They're like legit floating in space. They have like astronaut suits and everything. It's crazy. I'm like, what is going on here? And the reason they do this is they have to go to space to destroy this satellite that uh, Jacob and this other guy are, you know, uploading this very, uh, like, dangerous AI onto. So, at the end of the movie, they crash their car in outer space with the jet engine into uh, a small, like, satellite and the thing explodes. It is the craziest thing I've seen. I was like, what is going on? This movie is... It, you have to go see it just for the scene. It, it, it's probably like one of the craziest things they've done in this franchise so far. And this is the series which had cars take out a submarine on the ice and going through the streets of Brazil with a safe attached to, like, metal cables. So this series is known for doing some crazy things. And uh, I love this part of the movie. Then there's, like, a whole after story scene where after crashing into this satellite they go near like a space station and they like knock on the glass there where the astronauts are and they're like hey we need some help our car is out of gas or something like that so the people from the space station are like what are these guys doing here what is going on and you know they take them in and they take care of them until they can go back to earth later but it's just like a crazy part of the movie like, it's amazing. Wow, shout out to Ludacris and Tyrese again for, like, carrying some scenes in this movie so hard. Um, there's some fantastic racing scenes in this movie in the flashbacks. There's a, a really nice one between Jacob and Dom, where they're both, like, racing as teenagers, young adults. And, you know, they're at the end of the race, and they're like waiting to see who's going to be the first one to turn on the NOS for their car to get, like, that extra boost at the end of the race. And Dom waits, like, the last second and wins it and stuff. It's really nice. I love it. There's also a lot of old, older cars. So if you're a fan of, like, 90s, 80s racing, you're going to see a lot of nice vehicles shown in this movie because there's some flashbacks. So that was cool. Um, let's see... There's, there's a lot of emphasis uh, in this movie between, like, uh, family. I know that's a meme at this point, but there, there really is a lot of, like, we're doing this for family and you turn your back on family and stuff like that. So Dominic is kind of torn for leaving his brother Jacob because he blames Jacob for his dad's death. And later in the movie, Jacob reveals that his dad told him to mess with the car so he would intentionally crash, uh, but not die, just crash, so then he could get money and pay off some debts by throwing a race. And then, you know, Dominic realizes that he's been being mean to his brother. His dad made his brother promise not to tell Dom, and he's been keeping this promise even after the dad died, so he feels bad about this. So he kind of make a turnaround on his brother, not being so bad, and maybe maybe he can get a second chance because it's not it wasn't like really his fault or stuff like that so um let's see what else what else there's so many random scenes there's there's a cameo scene with cardi b in this movie came out of nowhere uh she's just in a few minutes though like she's literally in like a minute of this movie uh randomly she helps dom escape one part of the movie and gives him some useful intel. Was a little bit random, but 
I know some people are Cardi B fans, so she's in this. And if you're not a Cardi B fan, don't worry. She's just in a little bit of this movie. Um, let's see, what else, what else do we have? There's so many action scenes. They have, like, new technology in this movie of, like, magnetism, where they have, um, the power with the switch to turn on, uh, the negative or positive side of a magnet within a car. So they have, like, cars with magnets attached inside the vehicle, and they can change the polarity. So what this does is, when they turn it on, anything magnetic gets, like, attracted to the car. Things literally fly from the inside of buildings and attach themselves to vehicles. Stuff like cell phones, uh, you know, garbage cans, poles, things like this. Like, all the garbage on the streets literally flying at the cars. And then when they switch it to the opposite, stuff gets flung in the opposite direction. So they use this in the final, like, car race scenes in the movie. They're going up against this, like, huge armored vehicle. Kind of like an armored bus, almost. I don't know what these things are called. I've seen them in Deadpool, too. I'm sure there's, like, a military term for these. They look like huge armored buses with, like, multiple parts. Uh, kind of like a tram or something. Crazy armored, though. Um, and they're using all sorts of, like, techniques. Trying to, like, flip this thing. Crashing into cars. There's bad guys shooting at them. They're, like, flipping the, the polarity on their magnets. And these things are super powerful. Like, cars going through buildings. Stuff like that just by flipping switches. It's insane. There's so many crazy action scenes in this movie. Um, there's one scene where Vin Diesel's character, Dom Toretto, basically kind of, like, sacrifices himself. He doesn't, he didn't really need to, I feel, but he did it in this movie, um, where, like, he saves Letty and the rest so they can escape, and he takes on, like, 50 guys solo, it's crazy, um, he knocks, like, 15 of them out, and then the rest, he legit, like, fights them, breaks the entire platform where they're all on, and they all, like, plunge to their death, he basically dies too, and he goes into, like, a dream state, uh, with, like, flashbacks to the past when he was a kid, to his own kid, and then, like, he gets brought back, and that was crazy. There's another scene in the movie that was kind of played for jokes, but you didn't know if it was real or not, where, uh, Roman, uh, Tyrese Gibson's character, dies for a second, and you're like, wait, did he just die? But no, he's okay. And I knew that he didn't die, but for that, for that, like, one second, I was a little worried. Just because I know they have killed off characters in Fast and Furious movies before. Um, I just really like this movie. I think it's a really good action film, really good Fast and Furious movie. I love how a lot of the older characters came back in this one, and they've introduced some new ones. I think that Jacob, as Dominic's brother, is a great addition to the series, and I can't wait to see what they do with this in the future. I have to say, the one thing I didn't like was, at the end, Jacob and Dom team up to take out this one bad guy. This, uh, second-hand man of Jacob's kind of double-crossed him in the end. He wanted to use this AI for himself, along with Cypher, who kind of, like, seduced him in a way, like, manipulated him. And he freed her, and she is off doing her own thing. She hates the Fast and Furious crew, by the way, so she will get revenge. Um, so, at the end of this movie, there's, like, a final confrontation with, like, a fighter jet shooting missiles at Dom, and it's Cypher, yes, she escaped, she's in a jet, and she's shooting at them, and it's crazy, uh, Dominic basically takes out her fighter jet, and stands just staring at the jet explode in the middle of this explosion as debris flies by him, and he doesn't even blink. Like, it's a super cool scene, but also extremely unrealistic. Like, he legit takes out a fighter jet by flipping, like, this huge armored vehicle and swinging it into it. So, that was insane. And then it's revealed that Cypher, this uh, villain uh, played by Charlize Theron, is not in this fighter jet. But in fact, she was, like, 
uh, she was like piloting this jet from inside like some kind of like uh, airport or somewhere. I, I don't know where they where they were. It was kind of some um, facility. So this is kind of like what the military does with flying drones. Like they'll have guys in buildings far, far away piloting drones with no one in them, kind of like unmanned. And that's what they were doing with this fighter jet. So you kind of saw Charlize Theron in there, in the cockpit, but she wasn't in there. She was actually safe and sound inside some kind of military bunker, piloting this thing remotely. So it was a little disappointing that, you know, she's safe because she's going to come back in the next movie. She seems really angry that Jacob and Roman and... Uh, Tej and Dom and Letty and everyone is okay. She hates them and she wants to make them pay because, she, you know, she's the villain and everything. And that's one thing I don't like about this movie because it kind of ends a little bit on a cliffhanger there where you know, oh, they're going to make a new one. And in fact, they're making two Fast and Furious movies. They're going to make a 10th and 11th movie that's already been confirmed apparently. So she's definitely going to be the villain in either the next one or the one after that. There's an after credit scene in this movie that shows uh, uh, Shaw, Derek Shaw, played by uh, Jason Statham, punching uh, the villain that double-crossed uh, Jacob's character in this movie in a punching bag. And then someone rings at the door, and it's Han. Yes, Han. The guy who got killed in Tokyo Drift, the third Fast and Furious movie, by Jason Statham's character, and he did not know Han was alive, apparently. And that's the end of credit scene. It just shows that. So, my thoughts are the next movie possibly is going to have some kind of confrontation between Han and Jason Statham's character. We don't know what's going to happen. I think they'll probably end up being okay. And maybe they'll go take on uh, Cypher. You know, she's definitely going to be back. But, uh, yeah, that's that's one thing I did not like about this movie, the villain. I feel like in older, you know, previous Fast and Furious movies, the villain was very, you know, like you, you knew who it was, and you knew who the villain was going to be at the end of the movie, and they were kind of present the whole time. In this movie, I never really felt that Jacob wanted to kill Dominic. Even though there were scenes where they were fighting and stuff, you know, it was his brother. So you knew, kind of, they were going to patch things up by the end of the movie, which they do. So, the only other options are the right-hand man is going to double-cross him, which he does, and fails miserably very quickly, like he's a terrible villain. And then Cypher, she kind of breaks free at the end, does a little something, and escapes. So this movie has a little problem with no villain character really being there for the whole thing, which I was not a big fan of. But this movie has two references to Paul Walker uh, with his character Brian in the movie. Not the actor Paul Walker, but he played Brian in the Fast and the Furious series. And there are like two scenes where they reference him in a respectful way. And I think it's done beautifully and... At one part in the movie, um, they basically say their kids are safe with Brian because he's taking care of the kids while, while all the adults are fighting in this movie. The kids are okay. Brian's taking care of them back home. So I like that. Like, Brian's, you know, being the babysitter, I guess, taking care of all the kids. Even his wife is in this movie racing and out risking her life. So kind of cool to see that actress come back as well. Now, uh, the ending reference to Brian, though, is the one that hits the hardest. So, you know, at the end of the Fast and Furious movies, uh, at least all the recent ones, there's usually like a big barbecue or picnic or something. So for this one, everybody's, you know, meeting up, going to eat together uh, in their backyard, uh, I think at, at uh, Dom's place or something. They're all, like, chilling there, gonna eat. And there's one person missing from the table, and they're like, oh, who, when's Brian coming? And they say something about, like, oh, he's out. He's trying to, like, break his record or something. Like, he's racing. And then you see his R34, Brian's car, 
come flying down the street and drift, turn into the parking space, and then the movie ends. So Brian came home right in time to have, you know, barbecue with his family there, but they don't show him whatsoever because, you know, Paul Walker, rest in peace, still hurts to this day to even say that because he was such a good actor, good guy. I loved him as Brian in these movies. He did such a good job. And I feel like these little references in the movie were definitely put there, you know, for the fans, and I really respect what they did, because they did, they did it very well, uh, very tastefully, like, never felt shoehorned in, like, every time they mentioned his name, it was for, like, an important reason or something, so that was really nice. And, yeah, I didn't go over everything in the movie, just know the plot was basically about an AI satellite, it ends with them blowing it up in space, and on Earth, taking out this vehicle with uh, the double-crosser of uh, Jacob's team, and Cypher kind of escapes, even though they take out her holographically uh, piloted uh, fighter jet, and everything else in between is just a lot of action, a lot of racing, magnets, things like that, funny scenes, definitely worth watching, so I give this movie an 8 out of 10, you know, it's not a masterpiece, 10 out of 10, uh, interstellar, godfather type movie, you know, movies that people put up high on their rankings, but it's definitely a very, very fun and entertaining blockbuster film where you don't have to think too much to enjoy it, you just sit back with some popcorn, have a good time, and that's what I went for, and that's exactly what I got, so I do recommend it. And, uh, yeah, that is it for this Movie Geek review, so thank you all, and uh, so long. <laughs>